Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. Today we're going to carry on our conversation about VCMP. Uh, we're going to start with uh, guest uh, provisioning. And so, you know, you, the, the provisioning is incredibly flexible. You can have, so your, let's do a Vipreon. You can also do chassis based, but, uh, but let's say we have Vipreon here and we have Four C CPU on this one, on this blade. That's a lot of drawing. I probably could have done that before we got started, but uh, it is what it is. So, the flexibility is pretty incredible. You can you can create a single. Uh, let me do a different color here. So you could do a single guest and uh, like a single vCPU guest and just pin them to a specific blade. You can span multiple blades. Say I want to take the CPU on both of those blades. And you can even do non-sequential uh, uh, non blades and, and do something like this, where you come down and you take uh, the CPU off of uh, the remaining, or I guess two of the remaining ones off that blade, but go ahead and, uh, and secure those. So. A lot of flexibility. You can you can specify a single CPU, or you could specify it on a particular blade. You can uh, provision guests to be uh, a single blade, or multiple blades, or all blades. And the, the benefits there, from a standpoint of a system, maybe maybe this blade doesn't exist in the system, and but you have configured. Um, well, in that configuration, it wouldn't be because I've already used up all those guests. But say that doesn't exist, I'll, I'll go with green here, and uh, and this blue is gone. And say that I've specified, you know, guest one to be all blades, and and I have this pink one, you know, this CPU um, on on these three blades, and uh, pretend the blade four isn't here yet. And if I, if I insert blade four and I've specified all blades, then my guest just grew by uh, a vCPU and, and it does that without requiring a reboot, uh, does not interrupt traffic. And so, you know, that's, that's really cool stuff. And of course, if I remove that blade, same thing, it shrinks and doesn't impact traffic uh, to do so and doesn't require a reboot. Uh, other than obviously the connections that might be on that blade when you pull it out. Uh, but uh, the other thing that you can do is if you have a uh, vCPU uh, guest of one on this blade and you decide to widen it uh, within a blade and you want to assign more resources, then um, you know you can do that. Uh, but that does require that does require a reboot to do so. So a cross blade's not. It doesn't require it, but within a blade, if you're growing, it absolutely does. So lots of options, lots of flexibility. Uh, all that provisioning is done uh, from the host uh, when you go to create your, your VC or your, your guest. And so let's transition now uh, to talk a little bit about networking. And so if you have, and we'll stay on this side of the board, and I have my, let's just go two blades, and I have my gear here, and say I have a guest taking up this vCPU, and a guest taking up this vCPU, and then maybe I have a, a three, and then a one. And so when you're provisioning guests, you provision them as bridged or isolated. And so let's, a bridged guest or an isolated guest. And a bridged guest means that for management purposes, that guest is going to be bridged in to the physical management port of a particular blade. And, and so uh, that guy is going to share that Mac, um, I mean that, that uh, management port. So um, the, the management port 
is shared, but each guest will get their own MAC and IP adders. And it's um, important when you're configuring these, whether you're bridged or isolated, uh, that you configure your cluster member IPs on your management port. So in the config screen, each slot, you configure a cluster member IP. If you don't do this, you could have communication issues uh, with the, the SOD daemon, and so really important to configure that. And then uh, from an isolated standpoint, for one of these that is isolated, obviously it's not going to connect into the management port at all, so you have to use vConsole to configure a self IP on that guest in order to get access to it to provision it and all that. And so, so an isolated um, uh, guest means it is isolated. It's not going to be communicating, at least on the management network, between uh, other guests. And depending on how you do your uh, layer two stuff uh, will determine how further isolated they are uh, from a networking perspective on the, the data plane. Uh, but the, the control plane, uh, an isolated one means it's isolated. Good, good terminology there. Um, and then we have, uh, within networking, uh, you have the, the host versus guest. And in the first video, we talked about you know, what, what the host controls and what the guest controls. Uh, but I just want to reiterate here that, um, and let's, uh, I don't know what color I was using, but we'll go back to this one. Okay, so all layer two um, should be, configured at the host. So this is your, um, your, your interfaces, your trunks, your VLANs, all that stuff should be configured um, at the host. And then you, when you're provisioning your guest, you assign whatever you've configured uh, to the guest. And when the guest is spun up, then it inherits those configurations and, and, and takes care of that. You should not modify any of this information in your guest. Only bad things happen, don't do it. And, and then conversely, all L3 and up should be configured at the guest. At least as it concerns all L3 related to a guest, should be in the guest. And, and so, uh, specific to how you configure the networking um, on, on the host side, you know, it, it's best to take your physical interfaces, so that's, those are vCPU. Let me draw another bladed system here and say I have four blades, and uh, let's say I have, um, I'm not gonna draw them all, but say there's eight uh, ports on each one of these blades. You know, what I can do is I can take uh, two interfaces from this one. So this is like 1 slash 1.1 and 1 slash 1.2. And then this one would be uh, 2 slash uh, 1.1 and 2 slash 1.2 and so on. And then I could take all of those interfaces and wrap that into a trunk. And then I would assign that trunk to a VLAN. And of course, you're connecting all of this up into your switching architecture. But it, when you're configuring your trunks, that gives you resiliency. If one of these should fail, if a blade should fail, if an interface should fail, that gives you resiliency within within your networking, your physical networking configuration. And uh, it, you want to do this in powers of two, so you know it's two, four, eight, and so on. Uh, and and doing so, uh, you know, avoids uh, traffic skew on any one particular path, uh, independent of what hashing algorithm you select. Uh, if you go outside of the powers of two rule, then you know you start to see some weirdness there. And then finally on the networking thing before we switch over to talk about HA is you want to create a dedicated HA VLAN. Okay, uh, it's a best practice to do so. And, and now, uh, let's talk about HA a little bit, since that's a nice little transition there. 
Uh, best results, uh, particularly when you're using uh, your connection mirroring, is to make sure that your guests are set up between the, the same slot numbers and, and CPUs. So for example, if you've got your chassis here uh, with, I'm gonna end up drawing like 15 of these, uh, but you have your other chassis and you're doing HA between guests, and you don't do HA within a chassis, you do HA between chassis. And the chassis themselves do not do HA. They should not know about each other, really. It's, a, it's guest to guest. So if I have uh, this guy and this guy is, is my guest, then uh, for, for best results, you would then also kind of provision on this side, and these would become your, uh, you know, your HA pair. And so your, your guests, you treat them like any other standalone LTM appliance. You want to set up your device trust with the peer, set up the, your device group with your peer. And the guests will have access to the VLANs assigned by administrator. I know people, in fact, I just saw a question in the forum today about, hey, this chassis was set up with these VLANs, this chassis was set up with these VLANs, and so now I'm trying to set up HA. When it fails over, it doesn't work because the VLAN names are not the same and it's complaining. So, you know, setting up your... Uh, your VLAN nomenclature up front for HA is, is, is pretty uh, important and critical. And then uh, HA groups and VLAN failsafe can be configured at the guest level. And let's talk a little bit about HA groups. Uh, that is, you know, for failover between your peers, you can use load aware failover, you can use ordered lists, but HA groups is, uh, is another option. It's a good option. It's, uh, and an HA group is a set of trunks, pools, clusters, or any combination of that that a guest administrator uh, can create and associate with a traffic group. So the, the most common reason to use one is to ensure that failover is triggered when some number of trunk members become unavailable. And, and that comes back to you know, setting up your infrastructure in a trunk way. Best practices on HA groups, uh, check out solution 16947. And uh, so very, very high level breakdown of, of all these things. Of course, we have great details in our, in our product documentation for, for Viprion and for VCMP. So check out the, the product manual and I'll link some other solutions down here in, in the comments. So thank you for joining. And if you enjoyed this video, click subscribe. We'll see you out there in the community.